reading from May 2nd, entitled, Who is the Greatest? Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. Read the instruction given in the 18th chapter of Matthew. There is nothing more positive than this in all the oracles of God. And yet God is dishonored and His cause marred by the doing of the wrongs pointed out in this chapter. These words are for you and for me and for all who claim to be disciples of the meek and lowly Jesus. He shows us the principles upon which we are to act in all cases and under all circumstances. There is to be no striving for the supremacy. Christ teaches that in His spiritual kingdom it is not position, not outward splendor or authority that constitutes greatness, but spiritual excellence manifested in true conversion. We are ever to be learners of Christ. He has invited us, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And in your own experience, as you partake of my spirit and principles, ye shall find rest unto your souls. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. Christ's yoke is a yoke of submission and obedience. In our daily lives, before our brethren and before the world, we are to be living interpreters of the Scriptures, doing honor to Christ by revealing His meekness and His lowliness of heart. Christ's teachings are to be to us as the leaves of the tree of life. As we eat and digest the bread of life, we shall reveal a symmetrical character. By our unity, by esteeming others better than ourselves, we are to bear to the world a living testimony of the power of the truth. We are not to fear that unless we labor to be first, self will not be properly estimated. If men had higher and greater views of Christ, if they had greater confidence in Him and less confidence in themselves, their characters would be molded and fashioned after the divine likeness. When self is hid in Christ, the Savior will appear as the one altogether lovely and the chiefest among ten thousand. When men submit entirely to God, eating the bread of life and drinking the water of salvation, they will grow up into Christ. Their characters are composed of that which the mind eats and drinks. Through the word of life, which they receive and obey, they become partakers of the divine nature. Then their entire service is after the divine similitude, and Christ, not man, is exalted. Taken from Letter 64, dated May 2, 1900, to Brother and Sister Steed. <laughs> 